Uh, I think Christine Elliott's a, a solid choice uh, to rebuild the Ontario PC party. Uh, when I worked uh, with her at Queen's Park, uh, she certainly focused on a lot of important uh, issues, supporting people with mental health issues, uh, supporting seniors, supporting those with disabilities. I think she brings a, a new compassionate conservatism uh, that we haven't really heard in recent years. Uh, and I think she has all the tools uh, to show strong leadership and govern this uh, province uh, fiscally. So uh, it's great to see everybody turned out. I hope that uh, people pay attention to these candidates as they go across the province. And it's nice to see so many friends here from uh, New Market. So Christine, what do you hope to bring to the party as a leader? I hope to uh, to bring a win for us in 2018 and to, uh, to build the party, make sure we have the resources and the candidates and the, uh, the policies that are going to make sure we're going to win. But I think it's really important as part of that process that we involve all of our members in that process. It's not any one small group of people that decide that. I want to make sure that our party is open and inclusive and that everyone has an opportunity to uh, make decisions concerning the pol policies that we're going to choose to run on in the next election. It is wonderful to see so many of you here at, at noon on a Monday. It really means a lot to me and it certainly shows that the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario is in fact alive and well and we're ready to take on the challenge of rebuilding our party and winning the next election. Right 2014 was not a good year for us, but I think 2015 bodes really well and I think the, the work starts now, the selection of the leader in May and then we just keep on going. So we need to rebuild our party from the inside. We need to make sure that all of our members feel respected, but we only have about 12,000 members right now. So we need to reach out, and some of you may have heard me talk about building the big blue tent. We need to reach out to more and more people to make sure they know that they're welcome to join us in the BC party. We need to reach out to more women, more young people. Uh, we're not that cool on university campuses, apparently. My son Quinn is here taking some photos. Quinn is one of my three sons who are 23, 23, and 23, triplet sons. Uh, Quinn is a university student. He, he drew the short straw today to travel with mom, but uh, so far so good. But we need to reach out to young people. We also need to reach out to uh, people, new Canadians in communities that haven't heard our message about what it is to be a progressive conservative. And to me, it's two things. It's being fiscally responsible, first and foremost. We're not liberal. We don't spend money that we don't have. We live within our means. And the money that we do have, we spend on priorities. But what we haven't talked about more recently is why that fiscal responsibility is important. It's important so that we can be socially compassionate, so that we can help families that have children with autism and other special needs get the programs and services that they need so that we can make sure that frail elderly seniors get the home care and long-term care services they paid for all their lives, and so that young people with developmental disabilities, when they finish school at age 21, they don't just stay in their parents' basement watching TV, they can get out and have a life and find a job and be fully included in our society. This is a place for everyone. And that message, I can tell you, is resonating across the province. I've been doing a lot of traveling and will continue to do so right up until May 9th. Uh, but it's appealing not just to our members, appealing to a lot of people who voted Liberal the last time, who are ready to make a switch. And it's not like they voted for Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals in the last election. They knew about the gas plant scandals. They knew about the orange and e-health problems. They didn't vote for them. It's just we didn't present a credible alternative. We frightened and we've got to stop doing that. That's how we're going to win the next election, with that message of fiscal responsibility and social okay. compassion. So I would be most grateful for your support as we go through this whole process. That is uh, our winning combination, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. We need to spread the message across the province. And so if you haven't already purchased your membership, I think that's why Ted gave that to me, <laughs> is to, uh, to let you know that uh, if you haven't joined up, would you please consider doing so before the end of February? Anybody over 14 can join, so if you have children that uh, might be interested in becoming involved to directly elect our leader, that would be great. Um, the voting will take place, there will be a local voting place in each riding. 
it'll be a preferential ballot. So you'll vote your choices one through three. There's only three of us in the race now since uh, Vic and Lisa McLeod have come over to endorse me. Um, so it'll be one through three. I hope I be your number one choice. And then the ballot boxes will be taken from each location and each riding and taken to the Toronto Congress Centre where the ballot boxes will be opened on the 9th. So it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy. You only have to go and vote once and it'll be done locally. And uh, if you do have any doubt about whether your membership is still valid, it's very difficult to trace that because we really don't have the staff at the party right now. If there's any doubt at all, uh, may I suggest that you buy another membership. It'll only be tacked on to the end of the time that you already have. So we want to make sure that everybody that wants to vote has the opportunity to do that. And again, I'd, I'd be very grateful for your support and thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. It really means a lot.